Well, welcome to Ball Banter, and today we're joined by a director of football at MacArthur FC, Sam Krislovich. Sam, welcome to Ball Banter. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for having us here today. Um, what's it been like in Clubland this week? This week's been pretty exciting. It's been pretty um, nervous at times, but it's been exciting, and we're finally, you know, the sense of achievement that we've achieved in our finest football in our first year, considering how many people doubted us, how many people tried to destable us, how many people tried to white ant us, and we always believed that we could actually get there, and we got there. So that's a, it's a it's a it's a great team effort from the staff at the at the football football area to the staff in the office, and um, all of us combined to achieve this. Yeah, good stuff. And um, just wanted to touch on Mark Milligan. So obviously he announced his retirement uh, in the middle of the week here, and uh, he's apparently going to be part of the coaching staff. Um, was that always the plan for him to go? Well, firstly, here? firstly, Mark and I had lunch about four or five weeks ago and informed me of the, the decision. We just kept it quiet. Um, obviously, uh, up to him when he wanted to to inform the rest of the group. Um, yeah, well, we always there was a plan to transition him into 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 coaching and happened a year earlier than it should have but at the, at the end of the day you know like Mark's got a lot of experience we're a new club he can bring a lot to the coaching and help the young boys coming through and and that's what we want you know we, we not only want to develop our own players we want to develop our own coaches and Mark's the first uh, first step in line for that yeah excellent so he's pulled up stumps just a little bit earlier than you thought yeah one year earlier but uh, look, you know, I understand, Mark. I'd write, it's best to go on your own terms than on somebody else's terms. It's best, you know, he's still playing at a very cool, good level. I mean, anyway, watched the game on Monday. I thought he was outstanding. You know, his goal, yeah, his goal was top shelf, and you know, he, he's a leader. But you're you, you're better off going on your, on your own accord than someone else tapping you on the shoulder. So that's right. And we've seen A League players before maybe leave it a bit too long, yeah. uh, and, and you know, maybe their legacy gets a bit diminished. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, also wanted to touch on last Thursday, so we had the match against Central Coast Mariners, didn't go our way, but the atmosphere was quite good for a midweek fixture. Um, we had reduced price tickets for those who are on the hills, plenty of kids there. Um, is that something, a policy in terms of pricing for tickets that you're looking to... I think, um, I think people are getting too carried away and they're, they're, they're cherry picking the pricing based on their own argument. The reason why we haven't had, had, had that sort of... Well, that pricing was always was always a part of the pricing structure but the COVID restrictions forbidden us to actually roll it out right and then we went to something along the lines of okay midweek fixtures local kids give the pricing uh it's all like that i mean our, our prices are very affordable if you look at a like for like category for compared to the stadium uh, stadium configuration and we're very limited at Campbelltown, as everyone knows it's a pretty good pricing structure okay there's some people that think it's too expensive. Well, that's you know I understand that, but we there is a t there is a price point there for everybody to attend the game, okay? People that think that they should have premium platinum plus reserved seating for the same price as uh, as a as a general admission hill seating, uh, they're, they're delusional. That's not how the world works, right? Yep. So then, why do you think there was a increased uh, amount of people on the hills for that particular? Oh, because we, we, we rolled it out, so what we did was we rolled it out to all the local clubs in the area. Mm -hmm. And that's the first chance we really had to get all the clubs there because of the COVID restrictions, right? So you're saying it's more that it was properly marketed? It was more to do with with um, the COVID restrictions, right? We could only have 250 on the hill, each hill, until they got they got lifted because, and, and those, those 500 tickets were catered for by our sponsorship allocation. Yep. So we couldn't put any more people on there if we wanted. And that was only recently. It was recently released and, and lifted. Okay. Yeah, you know, people can go in and say, "Oh, this and that," but we're oper last year. We operated in a very heavily regulated environment by the government, who could can and could ten. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the derbies. We were limited to thirty eight hundred people. Yeah. And we still had to pay for the stadium, pay for the not the stadium. We pay for the security for the operations and all that. Uh, at the end of the day, we're still costing us forty, fifty grand a game. People don't realize, but that's what it costs. Campbelltown Stadium to host the event, minimum we're paying is 40000 Yeah, and that's tough to uh, uh, justify. Yeah. Tough to justify, especially with 3,800 people and everything else. So that's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also wanted to try and draw a few comments from you on some certain uh, transfer speculation that's come out from the <laughs> media. And I know you could give me the straight bat, bat, uh, bat back, but uh, we've heard 
First of all, reports of Ulysses Davia joining from Wellington for next season. Can you comment on anything like that? I'm very confident Ulysses Davida will be here next year. Lovely. Okay. That's, you've heard it first. Um, we've also heard some rumours, and it's maybe a bit more tenuous than the Davia rumours, um, about Daniel De Silva joining from Central Coast Mariners. Uh, Danny De Silva, we are in discussions with him. It's not a done deal yet. I'll be perfectly frank. That's amazing. I was expecting this to be like, no, nah, I can't comment on that. No, 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 honestly. No, we're in discussions with him and it's no secret. I mean, everyone knows it. But nothing's come to, to fruition and I'm, I'm not sure if it will. Two are play, amazing players as well, so, yeah. Well, look, we, look, you know, obviously we, we're looking at, you know, as the Americans call Ulysses being a franchise player. Mm. You know, it changes the whole face of our, of our club, changes the dynamic of the team. Someone you do with the club around. around. He's, you know, he's, he, he's at a good age and all these sort of things give us, gives us a lot of positives, you know. Yeah. Plus, um, yeah, plus he always gives, he gives us an opportunity when COVID, you know, when, when COVID finally gets lifted in a year or two, you know, potential sale into Asia, which is what we're looking for as well, you know, residual, yeah. revenue, interview, residual revenue for players to go overseas. Got to be looking for those revenues. Yeah, so, so we're looking at players that we can improve and eventually sell overseas. So it's a, it's a fine balance. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, because yeah. being in early, early stages of the club, you've got to look on, okay, how can we continue to make that profit, especially if the, cr the crowds aren't exactly what we want them to be? Look, the first year was always get who we can. Mm. Let's do the best we can. We were confident we could get there. The second year, uh, you know, if we went from being the ugly ducklings to no one wanted, hardly anybody wanted to come, to now everybody wanted to come, huh? The, play, the amount of, in the last four, four day weeks, the amount of players that have come across the desk is phenomenal. They're chasing us now. So that was a, for us, it's been a massive transformation in the, the perception of the club out there. Unbelievable. Yeah. And that's all what to do. You, what do you count that down to? Do you think they just want to work with Ante or they've seen the-, the Mate, do you want me to put it perfectly frank? Yeah. Everyone thought we were going to be shit. <laughs> that's the reality. Everyone thought we were going to be shit. Everyone yeah, was ready all- fair. I'm reading all the media specul all, all the social media crap that goes on, all the negative, all the white anting. They, they, but at the end of the day, you know, we we were confident in what we're doing. We had good, we have great football people at the club, and we knew we'd get to where we had to get to. Okay, yeah. and we've you know you know I was I was always confident we'll make finals football. Never once waned. Me and Ante were always confident. We uh, we also just wanted to press you on. I know we've brought in players like uh, Carl Cimenti from MPL. Yes. There's, uh, is there any other type of player, even if you don't have to drop the name, but any type no, of No, no, those sort before? of players you, you, you are really on the, what is relevant at that time of, the, of what's happening. You know, like, look at Charles, we plucked him. We plucked him from, from MPL, yeah? Mm. Charles, uh, Charles, I watched him once by accident, I was at a game and he played. And I said to Ante, I go, we need to go watch this kid again. He, yeah. He's a bit different. And then Ante went to watch him play a game, I think, against Arpia again. He rang me, he goes, oh, you're right about this kid, let's bring him in. So he brought him in and he, Charles is a good player. Yeah. So we're not, a, everyone looks at, we, we look at, all right, we've got to bring in good top players. We've got to bring good young players who we can improve, who have potential. And I think for too long, people have neglected the NPL. Yeah. People have think there's good players in the NPL. I mean, I come, I spend a lot of time in the NPL space. And obviously, you got to know players and things. But the biggest thing these kids need, they need a chance. And they need to be given and believe in that, right? Kamenti's yeah, come in as an injury replacement. He's doing very well. And you know, now he's, you know, he's got a few weeks and we'll see what happens. It's up to him. If he gets a chance tomorrow night, does well, he might win himself a contract. Just like Charles got an extension, Lockie got an extension, you know, Rusi got an extension, Holman got an extension. I mean, these are good young players, very good young players. Yeah, so it's about addressing that disconnect that was there between like the, the youth league, which is kind of a abomination, yes. if you want to put it bluntly, and the actual A league, the professional. 100%, so, 100%, 100%. Yeah, addressing that. It's good, it's good that we've got that direction, that development. Um, wanted to touch on the recent announcement of the t TV deal as well. I'm sure you may have known about this far <laughs> earlier because it's only just come out in the media. Um, but what is your take on it? Does it give us what is required to grow, not just as a club, but as a league? I, I think the best thing about the deal, and people need to realise this, it's an actual partnership. Okay, we Fox were just slaves. We are content slaves. They did what they wanted. They treated us with, 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 with you know, what one can only say a lack of respect. They tried to drive down the price for their own thing. 
the people don't realise this offer is Channel 10 and and Channel 10 and Paramount, but really it's CBS in America, and CBS do a lot of the MLS, yeah? So they've got a lot of synergies, and it's an actual partnership. Yeah. It's an actual partnership. And they have a stake in the league as well. No, they don't. No. Someone else is looking to put a stake in the league. Not yet. But, but the, 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 amount of, the, the amount of money that's been committed to the league, the amount of advertising contra dollars that's been delivered on prime time, the fact that we're going to have a game on, on, on Channel 10 every every once on free to wear on a Saturday night, that, that is unbelievable. People, you can't stress that. Don't forget what Channel 10 did with the 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 Big Bash. The Big Bash. Yeah. That's how they did it. So we you know we got a five year partnership with an option for an extension. Um, I mean Paramount is their streaming service, but they're obviously you know Paramount Pictures, so there's going to be a streaming service, very affordable, eight ninety nine a month. You can watch every game plus movies plus whatever. I, I think that's, you know, I think it's a proper partnership and um, uh, I'm very excited about it. Considering that, I've got to say, we kept, everyone kept that very, very quiet. Yeah. There was a big diversion around Stan. Everyone thought it was going to be Stan and that popped out last minute. So, the, you know, it's been very quiet, but it's been a lot of lot of work, a lot, a lot of hard work by a lot of good people. You know, and, and you know, you've got to take your hat off to, to Danny Townsend and... Um, and to, who, who ran that for the, in, on behalf of the clubs. Yeah, because they basically rescued the game. I mean, it was on a sinking ship in terms of Fox Sports who was disrespecting it, and now they've found a broadcast partner who seems to be invested in developing it. Look, oh, I've got to say, I think that it's, it's fair to say that, you know, they were looking to get away from Fox anyway. I mean, uh, you know, you, you can't look. I won't go into the specifics, yeah. but, you know, you, you've got... I, 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 I know there's a legal standpoint under contracts you can do it but from a morality point of view I think it was totally 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 it doesn't fit in my moral set anyway yeah. um, so the reason I wanted to ask you about the TV deal though is because earlier in the season there was this story that came out from uh, Sydney Morning Herald Tom Smithers I think it was and he's basically making the argument that there's so many off contract players for next season um, does that being locked in place now give us solidity to actually lock in players for longer term contracts or do we prefer to operate on having a certain amount of core players and then you know a bit of a for lack of a better term revolving door for certain well, I don't players. think it's a revolving door I think in any, any club and anywhere in the world you're always going to have 10 to 12 players on contract and you're always got to have the ability to rejuvenate the squad and change it you know whether you get younger players in change the dynamics of the squad in case the coach leaves you've got to have room to the new coach to bring in some some new players I think that's the norm. I think that I, I think it's suicidal for clubs to go in and sign eighteen players and lock everyone, and lock everyone in. in. I think it's very silly. Mm. You know, we, we've got what do we got? We got twelve players on the contract. We sign a few more. We're looking at a few more. So the stability there is you know 12, 13. That's that's about it. And that keeps the squad competitive. Keeps yeah. people competing for contracts. Keeps them looking forward and into the future. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, we talked about finals. I want you to, uh, as well, think about at the start of the season, you talked earlier about how we were written off, we were told that we you know, couldn't do this, couldn't do that, but there were also, alongside our entry into the league, a few promises that were made uh, at the start, and one of them I wanted to bring up with you was the, uh, the academy, the soccer academy, the Indigenous Soccer Academy, Charles Perkins. Look, academy. the Charles Perkins we'll Academy, uh, look, the Charles Perkins Academy is... Um uh, was something that was derived when we had a partnership in terms of when when the Walkers were involved. Um, you know, without going into too much of the politics, the club still has an aspiration for an Indigenous academy, but obviously people need to realise COVID hit. Mm. So priorities had to change. We And our first priority had to be to, to put a team on the park and fund that team. And the second priority was the community programs in and around, in and, in and around um, the, this area. The, the 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 new ownership group is not is not interested in running a travel show around Australia. Yeah. We're only interested in what happens in our own backyard. We're only interested in investing in our own backyard. We're only interested in doing stuff in our own backyard. Mm -hmm. So the Indigenous program must focus on Indigenous people in the Macarthur Southwest Sydney area, not somewhere else. We get no benefit out of that, and that's not part of where we want to be anyway. So that's, you know, basically we have to realign mm -hmm. our... Uh, but it's still something that's... Uh, yeah, the Indigenous Academy, yeah, 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 Indigenous Academy going. We've, we've sent a few teams, boys and girls teams, to Indigenous tournaments. 
Now we're in the final stages of working out the budget and the funding going forward. But again, the focus has to be on the Indigenous, young Indigenous men and women in MacArthur and South West. And uh, building off that, I guess one of the things that was recently um, reported on was the complex out at the back of Camden, the, the academy. Um, yes. Is that definitely going ahead, first of all? And uh, how do you see it sort of impacting our club? What does it, what does it bring for us? Oh, look, it's definitely going ahead. I mean, the, the ownership group is spending in excess of $3 million to buy the prop, to buy the land. So it's definitely going ahead. Yeah. Um, in terms of, it gives us our own facility, which we own. You know, we're no, we, we become landlords rather than being tenants and being dictated to by different organisations. It's a future, you know, a centre of excellence gives you more ability to grow and create something that you need as a club. I mean, considering that, you know, some clubs in the A-League haven't even got, they're 15 years in, haven't got their own training facility and we, we've gone to build one after one year. That means, you know, the, 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 the direction that we want to go is the right direction. Yeah, we're putting them to shame, you know, by having that development squad. We have to. I mean, it's 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 it's. You need to invest in infrastructure, and if with infrastructure comes all the other benefits. Yeah, well, it seems like we're building something um, that's got legs. You know, that's not just here and gone. Yeah, no, hundred percent. But that's that, that, that's the whole thing. You, you have to bring. You have to build a legacy. Mm -hmm. So the, the 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 whole thing about our mindset is once we leave, what legacy have we left? Yeah. Right. Well, thank you, Sam, for joining yeah, us. You don't want to ask me anything else. Anyone got anything else? Anyone? Off the cuff, let's uh, you know go. What? Let's go. Um, I've got one. Yeah. All right. Um, so earlier in the season, yes. there was a bit of tumult around active support and the bullpen. Yes. Can you comment on the relationship now? Has it... The relationship now with the bullpen is unbelievable. Yeah. There, there is The relationship previously was due to one or two individuals who thought they were bigger than the club and it was all about them and they were hijacking it for their own personal again and then they started a white anting social media campaign against the club which if you love a club you don't do that mate yeah. right you can have individual like for me you can dislike me but don't dislike the club you can have a go at me but don't have a go at the club and that's what we're dealing with yeah. you know the active supporter group we're very much in favor of it i mean we've even built i don't know if people have seen last week we delivered that mechanical bull, the bull. That, bull that, that blows the smoke you know safe smoke and that so we, we're doing a lot of Stuff in and around that. Yeah. Um, is there intention? Obviously, it's got to be a bit organic. But how is the club, I guess, assisting the growth? Of yeah. Look, we need to look at. I mean, we always look at the pricing structures. We got rid of the the under eighteen under eighteen restriction. Um, we want to make it more family friendly, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, you, you, I mean, it's it's been a it's been a tough, tough, tough grind to get to where we got to. Yeah. And you know, what, might as well one more off the cuff. Who are we signing next? Oof, that's a good one. <laughs> no, we, we, need a, we need to sign a left back. Yeah. So we're looking at a couple of left backs. We need to sign another defensive midfielder. So we're looking at a couple of them. You know, we'll most probably go for an experienced left back and maybe a younger, younger uh, defensive midfielder. You know, we okay, need no names on the radar. Ah, it's a couple, but nothing concrete. Yeah, you can ask me next week. I might have something concrete for you. Okay. So we're we, we're doing all we, we, we're doing all that. I mean, I mean, we're really concentrating on finishing the season the best we can going as far as we can in the finals and then we'll start you know obviously on building the squad for next year you know I mean our, my hard work and Ante's hard work starts the day after the group that we're knocked out everyone else goes on holidays but we start work we, we start preparing we start looking at stuff we look at videos we look at anal analysis we look at you know what are their high speed meters what are their you know all, how much do they run this is all big 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 stuff we need to do Anything? Uh, no, great convo. I was happy. happy. I was happy watching. Lovely. Well, Sam, thanks so much for thanks that. Thanks a lot, boys. Um, wish you all the best. All the <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, boys. Thanks. Thank you very much, mate.